Here we're going to look at a classic number theory style problem. We're going to use a lot of preparatory results that would be in like an elementary number theory course. And I'm not going to prove those results because that would take, you know, probably a couple of hours to get us up to speed. But I taught number theory last year and you can find the playlist for the videos that I made for that course. And the videos are a bit older, so they're not quite as well produced as these are now. But I think all the information's still there. Okay, so let's see what our goal is. So we want to find the last two digits of this number. So we've got 123 to the power of 789 to the power of 456. And our main tool will be Euler's theorem, or sometimes called Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem. And it says that if the GCD of A and N is one, in other words, A and N are relatively prime, then a to the phi of n is congruent to one mod n. And this phi of n is called Euler's totient function. And what it does is it counts the number of elements in this set. And this set is built of all of the numbers between one and n that are relatively prime to n. So let's maybe look at some examples real quick. So for instance, we could look at phi of 12 so maybe the best thing to do is just to look at all the numbers between <clears throat> 1 and 12 and cross out the ones that are not relatively prime to 12. So let's see what we have to cross out. So um, we have to cross out 2. Notice that 2 is a divisor of 12, so it's definitely not relatively prime with 12. 3 is no good. 4 is no good. 6 is no good. 5 and 7 are, are okay. Well, they're prime, so they're automatically okay. 8, so that is not relatively prime to 12. Notice their GCD is 4. 9, that's not relatively prime to 12. That, their GCD is 3. So 10 and 12 are also not relatively prime to 12. So in the end, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers that are relatively prime to 12 that are less than or equal to 12, and so we have phi of 12 is equal to 4. And now applying Euler's theorem, we can see immediately that if we took 5 to the fourth power, that must be congruent to 1 mod 12. <clears throat> and we can actually check this. And in fact, it, we don't always have to go up to this maximum number here. Sometimes we go up to a factor of that. So for instance, if we take 5 squared, 5 squared is 25, but 25 is congruent to 1 mod 12 because it's 1 more than 24. So in other words, if you divide it by 12, you get a remainder of 1. So here we have this is 1 mod 12, but that tells us that 5 to the fourth is going to be congruent to 1 squared, which is congruent to 1 mod 12. So Euler's generalization of Fermat's little theorem checks out in this case. Now, the next thing that I want to do is notice that we have a nice formula for Euler's totient function, and we can just write it down. Maybe I'll fit it in right here. So phi of n has the following form. So it's going to be n times 1 minus 1 over p sub 1 all the way up to 1 minus 1 over p sub k, where those pi's are all of the prime divisors of n. So via this formula, we can calculate um, phi of a bunch of numbers very, very easily. So for example, let's look at phi of 36. So we know that's going to be equal to 36. And now we've got to multiply by 1 minus 1 over all of the prime divisors of 36. So there are only two prime divisors of 36, 2 and 3. So we've got times 1 minus 1 over half, 1 minus 1 over third, like that. So that's all there is to it. Notice that this is going to give us 36 times a half times 2 thirds. Notice we can do a little simplification there. Those twos cancel. 36 over 3 is 12. So that means phi of 36 is 12. And I bet we could just write out all of the numbers between 1 and 36, cross out the ones that are not relatively prime to 36, and we'd be left with 12 numbers um, once we were done with that process. Okay, so now that we're kind of done with this, I'm going to clean up the board and we're going to launch into our main goal. 
Okay, now that we've done a little bit of review, we're ready to launch into our goal. So we're gonna calculate the last two digits of 123 to the 789 to the 456. And the first thing that I wanna notice is if we wanna find the last two digits of anything, then all we care about is the reduction mod 100. So notice the last two digits of any number will be the remainder after dividing by 100. In other words, if we reduce mod 100, then all we're left with is what we want. So let's go ahead and put here, so we'll reduce mod 100. Great. But now let's go ahead and look at our number here. So we have 123 to the 789 to the 456. Okay, so this whole thing needs to be reduced mod 100. So that may seem still like a tall order, but we can look at Euler's generalization to Fermat's little theorem and notice that the exponent is operating mod phi of n. So notice if we like divide this exponent by phi of n and then keep the remainder, the remainder is the only thing that's interesting happening in that exponent because any multiple of phi of n just takes this number 123 down to one. And so the takeaway here is that this exponent is happening mod the Euler phi function of 100. Good. But I might as well point out that the Euler phi function of 100 is 40. You know, maybe we can calculate that over here on the side. So phi of 100, so that's gonna be 100 times one minus one over all of the prime factors. So that's gonna be one minus half times one minus a fifth. Two and five are the only prime factors of 100. So let's see what that gives us. That gives us 100 times a half times four fifths. But then that very, very quickly becomes uh, 40. So notice we have 100 divided by 10 times four. So that's gonna be 40. Okay. But now we've got one more level of exponents here, and this exponent will be working mod phi of 40, just because we've got this Euler's theorem inside Euler's theorem, essentially. So, like I said, this is gonna happen mod phi of 40, and I'll just say that that's gonna be 16. So this exponent is working mod 16. Let's maybe go ahead and check that out over here. So we've got phi of 40. So what are the prime factors of 40? They're also just two and five. So we've got 40 times one minus half times one minus a fifth. So again, that's 40 times a half times four over five. But notice we've got 40 over 10 is four times four is 16. So that's right, this is working mod 16. Now we want to do some like division problems with remainder in order to reduce from the inside out. So notice that we have uh, 456 is equal to the following. So that's equal to 28 times 16 plus eight. So that's just easy uh, division with remainder. So what that tells us is that 456 is congruent to eight mod 16, which is a really important fact because again, this exponent in the exponent is working mod 16. So we may as well replace this 456 with eight, which is what we'll do in the next step. Okay, and next let's look at this 789. And we're gonna look at that after dividing by 40 because we're reducing that mod 40. So that's 19 times 40 plus 29. So that means that 789 is congruent to 29 mod 40. So let's write that down. So 789 is congruent to 29 mod 40. Great. Now we've got to look at the base and the base is working mod 100. So that means 123, well that's easy to see. That's just 100 times one plus 23. But that tells us that 123 um, is congruent to 23 mod 100. Good. Now we wanna put all of this together. So we can reduce this one bit at a time. So this is gonna be 23 
And now we've got uh, 789 goes to 29, to the 29. And then we've got 456 becomes eight. Okay, good. <clears throat> but that might seem still a little bit tricky. Like maybe this is uh, too much calculation, more than we want to do. But we can use a simplification rule here, and that is working with negative numbers instead of working with positive numbers. So notice if we have 29 mod 40, that's gonna be congruent to minus 11 mod 40. And how do we see that so quickly? Well, notice if we do uh, 29 minus 40, we're gonna get minus 11, so we've got it. Okay, cool, so that means we can rewrite this as 23 to the minus 11 to the eighth power. Um, but then maybe we'll split this eight up into four times two. So that gives us 23 to the minus 11 squared, and then all of this to the fourth power. So something like that. But that's actually easier than it looks because minus 11 squared, well, that's gonna be minus 11 times minus 11, which is 121. But this exponent is working mod 40. So this being 121 is especially helpful because that's congruent to one mod 40. Great. And so now what we can do is rewrite this as 23 to the one, and then that one is being raised to the fourth power. Again, because we reduced this mod 40 because we're working within um, that stage of the Euler's theorem. Okay, but now this part's easy. One to the four is one, so we end up with just 23 to the one. In other words, we have 23, and this is mod 100. So these are not equivalent, these are not equals here. These are congruence modulo 100. So to finish it all off, we have the last two digits of this object right here are just 23, which is maybe not as satisfying as we want it to be because 23 is the same thing as this down here, but that's actually just a lucky happenstance. Okay, that's a good place to stop.